Today we're going to have a look at this question that is in the world of coordinate geometry and kind of introductory calculus and it's a multi-part question so there's a lot of thinking involved. We're going to look at number one the way to solve the thing, number two we're going to think about the final part of the question because it's got a few different uh, approaches that you could take that are all equally valid in terms of giving you a solution but there are different levels of thinking and sophistication of reasoning involved. And then lastly when I looked at this question and was working through it I realized it was a really great illustration of the things that I'm really interested in my students learning in mathematics beyond just the content. Um, thinking about the particular skills and ways of thinking that are involved when you do mathematics. So we're going to go through those in turn. Let's start by just understanding the question. It says in the diagram below the function y equals 2x squared has been drawn with a point a uh, and then you get coordinates such that uh, little a is greater than zero. Okay, let's pause right there. There's a lot to unpack. So we've got this parabola y equals 2x squared and the point capital A with coordinates little a to a squared, uh, you can see there in the first quadrant. Let's, uh, let's highlight it there, shall we? All right, so this is what we're dealing with at this spot. And you can see that the coordinates, little a to a squared, they correspond to, there's the x, there's the y. Uh, that's what we're dealing with over here. Now, it then says such that little a is greater than zero. So there's little a right there. And there are two clues here that uh, we need to pay attention to this and be a little careful with it, especially if you're a student who this question is, is pretty overwhelming and, and confusing, right? Little a is a pronumeral. It's not just any pronumeral, it's a variable. Now, the way I know that is that it says a is greater than zero. That means a could be one, a could be two, a could be a quarter, it could be anything. It can take on different values. Not all pronumerals can do this. Not all pronumerals are variable. Some pronumerals are constant, things like pi and e. But when you see that this question here has these coordinates, and then it has this inequality, what that implies is that this point A can move. Uh, or, and then perhaps another way of saying it, is that the point A doesn't have to be at exactly this location. The point A could be here, or it could be here, or it could be here. The point A has to be on the parabola, but it can occupy different places on that parabola. Now, it's a little bit weird. Uh, it does make the question a little more uh, algebraically complicated because if we've got coordinates for A, uh, like say maybe it was 1 comma 2, right? Everything would be arithmetic, it would be a lot, a lot easier to deal with and the parts of the question you're going to see um, that we have to answer in a minute would be just much simpler. Things would cancel out much faster. Um, but the fact that it's variable means that we have to be a bit more careful with this, right? Let's keep going in reading the question. The tangent at A intersects the y-axis at T. All right, so there's this tangent here. I'm going to mark it in. Let's make it green. So I've got this tangent here. And you can see right down the bottom here, it intersects with the y-axis at T. And then we've got the same thing, the normal at A. So uh, if you're reviewing this language, you're like, yeah, what does that mean? Okay, let's put it in pink here. The normal at A is this line here, you can see that, well for starters, it goes through A, but what's happening is that it is at right angles to the tangent, it's perpendicular, right? That's what we define a normal to be. Normals are actually really important for lots of things like say, um, angles of reflection off of something, if you had a, a light beam or, or electromagnetic radiation, that kind of thing. Uh, there are other things that, you know, in, in computer graphics and people play games or they're making movies, uh, the angle and the direction of the normal from a particular surface, in this case it's a parabola, is really important. So anyway, that's why we care about these things. That normal there intersects the y-axis at n, that's up there. Okay, so now we understand the situation. What are they asking for us? So well, there's four parts here. We want to, firstly, for parts one and, I didn't mean to write that, for parts one and two, basically they want us to find where T and N are. So here are T and N, and helpfully, they've given us the coordinates. Now, what this signals, by the way, and you can kind of, you know, notice it, whenever a question says, show that, show that, in fact, we have three of them here, 
and then they provide you with the actual answer, right? What that indicates to you is that actually the answer and finding it accurately, while it's important, it's not the only thing or even the main thing that we care about. We care about it so little in some cases that we'll just hand it to you. And what we're really interested in showing is or seeing from a student is how do you get there? Um, we'll get to why that is important a bit later on. So we want to find where point T is. We want to find where point N is. Uh, there's an area of a triangle which we're going to need to work out, so we'll get into more detail on that later. Uh, and then part four, I mean, I, I'm not worrying too much about how to actually solve this, but it's just worth reading all of the parts of a question before you start attempting to solve it, because often the real question is the final part. And parts one, two, and three, in this case, are actually just kind of stepping stones that are designed to help you get there. Um, there's a clue, by the way, that this often happens. Uh, but a question can sometimes begin with the word hence, which means use all the stuff that you saw before to do this next thing. Sometimes you see hence or otherwise, which is to say, you know, you can use the clues and the scaffolding that I've provided for you, but if you can find another way, go for it, right? But if you only see the word hence, you have to use those first three parts. And even if you don't see the word hence, when you have this multi-part kind of situation, uh, it's highly likely that everything here is sort of building up to a point. Part four is like the real ultimate question, as it were. Parts one, two, and three just to help us get there. All right, so now we've got the basic uh, trajectory of what's going on here. This final part is something to do with when this triangle, T-A-N, is isosceles. Don't fully understand that yet, but I think it will emerge as we start to go through the question. Let's start to actually solve this, okay? So show that the point T has coordinates zero, negative TA squared. Okay, so I'm looking for this spot down here. To find where this place is, the thing that defines where T is, is this green tangent line that we highlighted here, right? To find this y-intercept, I'm going to need to know the equation of this tangent line. And once I do that, I'll solve for an x equals zero, and then off I go. So it's really important that you think through what's your plan of attack with this question. So I've got a copy of the diagram just here so we can follow what's going on. So this is part one. What I want to do is find the equation of that tangent. The way that we do that is by finding first its gradient and then a point that it goes through. We already know that this tangent goes through A. Well, I should say capital A, right? So what we can do is we can say if y equals 2x squared, we can use our you know, fundamental calculus to be able to say, well, the derivative in this case is going to be 4x because I've multiplied the coefficient by the power, reduced the power by 1. And so I can say at A, that's the, the actual point, um, x equals little a, which means that dy on dx at that point is going to be 4 times x, which in this case is 4a. So I've got a gradient, and I already have the coordinates of this point a. You can see here it's a comma 2a squared. I've got point, gradient, or you can use point gradient form. Okay, So I'm going to say equation of... I could call it the tangent. Uh, in this case, because I have uh, the letters, the points actually provided, I'm going to say uh, line a t because uh, in some cases, not in this case, but when you're having a little question, sometimes there's more than one tangent flying around. And so if I said the equation of the tangent, uh, someone who's reading it might say, well, which tangent are we actually referring to here? We want to be as clear and unambiguous as possible. There's only one line that can be a t. So that's why I'm going to call this that tangent line. Right, we're going to launch into point gradient forms. So in this case, I'm going to go, I'll just write this up above so that we can sort of reference it mentally. Y minus Y1 equals M outside of X minus X1. If you're the kind of person who hasn't felt familiar with point gradient form, general form, two point form, all the different kinds of ways that you can write the equation of a line, me writing this line here in pink, it doesn't get me any marks, but what it does do is it helps get my my brain space sort of freed up so that I don't have to keep this in my mind, I can actually just start to um, input the relevant numbers in the relevant places. Or I should say the relevant terms because it's all algebraic here as we were discussing before with little a. On the other hand, if you feel really comfortable, don't feel like you need to spend time writing y minus y1, etc. Obviously it does take uh, a few seconds to do that and it's not required, right? But now we've got it there, let's go ahead and put in the information. So y1 is the y coordinate of capital A, which in this case is 2a squared. We just worked out the gradient, it's 
a, and then we've got x minus, and the a, the x coordinate, I should say, is a. All right, just a very minor note that I'm going to mention here, which is that a lot of students, when they're calculating the equation of a tangent, like we're doing right here, they know that they can use point gradient form. Uh, they know the point, often the point, frankly, is just given to you in the question, and then they say, oh, I need the gradient. Where does the gradient come from? Well, the gradient is related to the gradient function. Now, it absolutely is, but one of the uh, common mistakes that I see, let's use green, is that we take this gradient function here, and then we just pop that thing straight into the point gradient form, there. Now, this doesn't work for a couple of reasons. Firstly, you start to input things. Uh, if I put that 4x in there, you'd see you'd end up getting an x squared and you're like, wait a second, my tangent line is a parabola? That doesn't sound right. It's not. Uh, the other issue is that, you know, you've got this value m, it's a constant in this case, so it, it can't change, unlike 4x, which is a gradient function, right? m's a number, I have to be able to know what it is, right? Uh, so that's why I have to substitute 4a and not 4x. So that's a minor point there. Now I've got the equation here. Um, I'm well aware of the fact that I could tidy it up. For instance, I can see on the right hand side, I can expand these brackets. That leaves me with a 4a squared and I can see that there are common terms on both sides. You can see there's uh, 2a squared, 4a squared, they're both negative, so therefore I can go ahead and I can add 2a squared to both sides, like so. But I, I just kind of want to highlight the fact before we go any further, that whilst I simplified this, and I would of course recommend simplifying wherever you can, simplifying is a funny word, its meaning is context dependent. Uh, in this case, it was unambiguous that I should, you know, uh, expand out and collect those like terms, it's definitely simpler than what I started with on the first line. But you know, to go from, say, line 1 to line 2 here and expanding, sometimes actually leaving things factorized is more simple, and sometimes expanding things is more simple, and it depends on what it is you're going to do next, right? Are you going to, in our case, find a y-intercept, or are you going to differentiate again, or are you going to... There's any number of different things that you might be doing, and so the idea of simplifying depends on what is the next step. In this case, I'm trying to solve for y, and that's why it's kind of sensible to try and isolate y, make y the subject on the left-hand side, right? But in other cases, that, not may be, that may not be true. So just think about that fact when you're doing algebraic manipulation. Sometimes you'll be reading a solution, and you'll think, why did they do this line and then that line? They're often thinking one or two or potentially more moves ahead, and that's what's guided the, the reason why they've simplified in a particular way or, or manipulated the algebra. All right, so I've got my equation of line AT. So this was the, the tangent, the green line that we saw before. The reason why I cared about that is that if I let x equal zero on this tangent line, then I'm gonna find the coordinates of t. That was what part one was about. So I'm gonna say, um, to find t, let x equal zero. And so what I'm gonna get is y equals four a times zero. That's just zero take away 2a squared, so what I'm getting is negative 2a squared. I'm sort of done at this point because my x coordinate was already known, it was 0, and I've just gotten a y coordinate. Let's always go back and have a look at the question to see if we've answered it as we expected. Show that the point t has coordinates 0, comma, negative 2a squared. Well, that's a relief, we got the right answer, so I'm going to tie that up in a neat bow, and I'm going to say t is at 0, comma, negative 2a squared, happy time. 